Okay, the simplified octet rule, or why do ions form? Okay, so before we discuss naming compounds in just a couple of lectures, we need to talk about, we need to be able to predict what ions will form from various elements. And this simplified octet rule is going to give us a way to rationalize this. And so the first thing we need to think about is that noble gases, any of those elements in that last column on the periodic table, main group 8, they are particularly stable and they generally don't react. And why is that? Well, basically it's because they have 8 electrons in their valence or outer shell. Now for helium, that's only 2 electrons, but it's the only one. But noble gases generally have, well, they have 8 electrons in the valence shell and that makes them particularly stable. Now, it turns out that atoms that are not noble gases also want eight electrons. And so they need to find other ways to do this. So, and that's what we're going to talk about. So atoms can obtain an octet in three ways. They can gain extra electrons in the outer shell. And when they do this, they're going to form an anion or a negatively charged ion. Or they can lose excess valence electrons in that outer shell. And when they do that, they're going to form a cation. And so this would be a positively charged ion. So those are the two ways. They can also share electrons with other atoms in the molecule, but we're going to actually use that idea later on in the course, more toward the end of the semester. Okay, so the first thing we want to remind ourselves of is that in reality, there are no orbits, okay? But I am going to use orbits, or a picture of them, to explain this concept. But just remember, it's not real, but it gives us a chance to visualize how we're going to form octets, or how we're going to add electrons or take away electrons to have eight electrons in the valence shell. All right, and then just reminding ourselves that the real structure of an atom is 99% empty space, so you have your nucleus here, okay, and then the electron cloud around the nucleus, and it's 99% empty space. Okay, so let's look at helium first. Now helium has two valence electrons. It actually only has two electrons, period, okay, and these electrons are in this n equals one energy level. We're going to talk more about this later on in the course also. So this is, you can just look at this picture and say, all right, so here's our nucleus, and here's one orbit, and here's another orbit, okay? And we have our nucleus with two protons, because the atomic number for helium is two, and the, it, and the neutral helium atom has two electrons. So we're going to put those in this n equals one energy level and call them valence electrons. Now, why is that? N equals 1 is the lowest energy, so we're going to put electrons there in the lowest energy first. That'll come back later on in the course as well. And then we're also going to realize that this N equals 1 energy level only holds two electrons, okay? So we only have two electrons to put in there, and that fills it up, okay? Now, I didn't even have to draw this N equals 2, but I, I left it there just showing that it has nothing in it, okay? Now, a definition we want to keep in mind is that whatever the outermost shell, whatever that one is, whether it's n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, way out here, that's going to be our valence shell. So if there are electrons in it, that's the valence shell. So here's the valence shell for helium. There are no electrons in here. So we're not going to count it, all right? So we have two electrons in this first shell, and those are valence electrons. Now, helium is a noble gas, two electrons in the n equals one energy level, and that fills it up, okay? So that means it has a full shell. Now remember, helium is the only one that is happy with only two as a noble gas. All right, we'll see that he, hydrogen is also happy with two at some time. Sometimes it's happy with zero. Okay, 
So let's go on to the next example, another noble gas, and that's going to be neon. Okay, so neon is the next one down. Atomic number 10, so here's our 10 protons. Okay, and the n equals 1 energy level still only holds two electrons. Okay, so we can put two of them in there, but we still have eight left. So we're going to put those in the next highest energy level, and that's n equals 2. And now these guys are called valence electrons because they're on the outermost shell. Okay? So in this outermost shell, we can count the electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? And that's the maximum that n equals 2 can hold. And these are valence electrons, and there are eight of them. So that means that neon has a noble gas configuration, which we would expect because it is a noble gas, and we could also say that it has a full shell configuration. So it has eight electrons in the outermost valence shell, and we say that neon has an octet. Okay, so what about for these guys like lithium who do not have an octet in their valence shell? All right, so lithium has an atomic number of three, has three protons, has three electrons, so we're going to put two in n equals one, and then we're going to go to the next energy level, and we're going to put the last one right there in n equals two. Now, the thing that makes this a little bit different is that you can see there's one electron way out here, so that means now this is the valence shell, all right? Now, this is the core shell, okay, so it's full and there's an electron in an outer shell from it. So this, these are core electrons, and this is the valence electron, okay? And we can see that lithium only has one electron in its valence shell, okay? Does it have a noble gas configuration? Nope. It wants either eight right here or two only and get rid of that guy, okay? Now, it turns out that it's much, much, much more favorable for this electron to just go away, leaving this full shell configuration that looks like helium, which is a noble gas, okay? So lithium is going to lose that electron, so it'll go somewhere else, maybe some other atom in the compound will go somewhere else. It's going to ionize, and it's going to form a plus one cation. Okay, so now the valence shell right here, the outermost energy level with electrons in it, and now we have two electrons in a full shell configuration. So now we actually would call this valence electrons, okay? And that last electron in N equals 2 is gone. So does lithium have a noble gas configuration? Yes, it looks just like helium. Okay, except that it has one extra proton, so three pluses, two minuses, and so overall plus one charge. Okay, so let's look at another example. Now this is going the other direction. Fluorine is a nonmetal, okay? Fluorine does form ions, and so our atomic number for fluorine is nine, so here are our nine protons, okay? And I'm going to distribute the nine electrons. I'm going to put two here, and then I'm going to put seven here, okay? Now, does fluorine have an octet the way it stands right now? It doesn't. See, it only has seven electrons, but it's not such a hard thing to just gain one more electron, and now it has eight, okay? So now there are eight electrons in this valence shell, so now fluorine looks like neon and forms a fluoride anion, okay? So this negative charge is going to come from the fact that we have one extra electron versus the number of protons, okay? And now fluorine has a noble gas configuration just like neon because it gained one extra electron, okay? Now just keep in mind, in general, metals lose electrons and form cations. So it's easier for them to go to the previous noble gas configuration, and nonmetals generally gain electrons to form anions. 
Okay, so here's our simplified octet rule. So atoms are going to lose or gain electrons to obtain an octet. So remember that's eight electrons in the outermost shell unless it's helium, which then it'll be two, and this is just like noble gases. So you, they're either going to gain extra electrons and form anions if they're nonmetals, okay? They're going to lose excess electrons to form cations if they are metals, all right? And then just remember, keep in mind for later on that they can also share them so that each atom in the molecule has an octet. That comes in with covalent bonding, and we'll talk about that in Unit 8.